Hey, what is up guys and welcome to RBN Hardware. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to put together this entire $900 gaming PC in 2021. I'm going to show you guys the best Full HD and 1440p gaming PC that you can pick up for around $900 in July of 2021. Showing you guys all the PC parts before booting the system up, testing out the gaming performance in not just 1440p but also in 1080p in 18 games in total. Now all PC components you see in this video are all linked up in the video description down below. So let's go ahead and start with the build then, and I like to start all my PC builds with the motherboard, now currently sitting at $135, the ASUS B450 Gaming-F is a super popular ATX board for Ryzen, packed with all the features you could ask for. The Gaming-F comes in a sleek black finish, which will match up great with today's PC build. If you want to save a few dollars here, I do recommend having a look at the Tomahawk Max. And the Tomahawk comes with similar specs and features, but it's uh, yeah currently sitting at just $99. So yeah, a few dollars you can save here if you want to. Now before installing the CPU, we need to get rid of these two retention clips. With that done, let's go ahead and unbox the CPU. This is the Ryzen 3 3300X, which is a 4-core A-thread CPU with a 3.8 GHz base clock and a boost clock of 4.3 GHz. Now included in the box is also the cooler, which we are gonna use in today's PC build. Now, in terms of CPU gaming performance, well, thanks to the high clock speed and thread count, the 3300X is performing fantastic despite only having 4 CPU cores. With that all being said, at its current price of $200, it is however playing in the same league as the Bigger Brother 6 Core 3600, which is a better buy. But yeah, because prices and availability are changing all the time, you'll find the best current deal by checking out the latest pricing at the links down below. Now to install the CPU, we need to match up the triangle located at the lower left side corner of the CPU with the triangle or circle we find on the motherboard. Lift up the lever, line up the triangles then gently place the CPU in its socket just like that. And lower the lever and the CPU is installed. Next up, let's go ahead and get the CPU cooler ready for installation. An installment process is easy and all you need to do is to basically position the heatsink of the CPU. Make sure that the four spring screws align with the screw holes on the backplate and carefully tighten the cooler down in a pattern like so until you're feeling resistance. Then take the CPU fan cable and plug it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Next up is going to be our RAM. This kit is coming from G-Skill called Trident Z RGB. It's a 2x8GB kit clocked at 3200MHz and it's packing some customizable RGB. Now these are currently sitting at $97. But there are much cheaper options out there as well. I'll link up my favorite deals right now down below. I generally recommend settling for 3000 to 3200 megahertz RAM speed, preferably a 2x8 gigabyte RAM kit. Next up is the SSD. Now the two parts you will need for this step is the M.2 screw which you find inside the motherboard box and the M.2 unit. Now this is the Kingston A2000 which is a high quality and budget friendly SSD that I've been using for most of my PC builds with great success. Now the SSD easily slides into its socket and will be fastened into place using the M.2 screw. 
All right, so let's go ahead and prepare our case. This is the Long Cool 215 from Lee and Lee, a $90 mid tower budget high airflow case that is rocking a super clean all black design with not just one but three fans and two of which that you can customize thanks to the RGB button that we find in front of the case. Now this video marks the second build I make with this case but I am still as excited as I was the first time and I cannot wait to find out how the CPU and GPU are going to perform temperature wise especially during heavy gaming. Now we are almost ready to install our power supply but before we do that guys I do think this is the perfect time to install the front audio and USB cables and so we don't have to worry about that stuff later. So let's start with USB 3 and this is what this cable looks like. Next up is the front audio. This cable goes to the left side corner. Lastly, we also have the front panel connectors. With that done, let's grab the power supply. Make sure that the fan is facing downwards, then gently slide it into place and secure it. Let's do a couple of cables before installing our graphics. First up, we got the 24 pin power for our motherboard and this one goes to the right side of the board. Next up, we got the power for the CPU. This one goes to the top left side corner of the case. Lastly, we also need some SATA power to feed the RGB. And with that done, the time is here guys, the part you've been waiting to hear about. I'm obviously talking about the graphics card. This here is the ROG Strix GeForce RTX 2060 from Asus. Now the 2060 comes with 6GB of fast G6 memory on a 192-bit wide bus packed with both Tensor and RT cores that fully supports DX12 Ultimate thanks to more games starting to support upscaling features like DLSS. The 2-year-old 2060 is still holding up great in 1080p and 1440p in modern games. Now, standard games team red, the 2060 performs similar to the 5600 XT. However, keep in mind, AMD's entire 5000 series cards don't support ray tracing or DLSS, something that is worth having in mind, especially if you care about ray tracing, of course. Anyway, taking a look at the 18 game benchmark, there is no doubt that the 2060 still holds up great in 2021, regardless if you choose to pair the gaming PC with a 1080 or a 1440p gaming monitor, yeah you simply won't be disappointed here. The only disappointment right now is availability and pricing. Thankfully though the situation is looking better and brighter every day. Anyway, let's plug in the graphics card. And let's take this dual PCIe cable and plug it into our graphics. And that is basically it. Let's slide on the side panel and let's fire up the PC. And let's take a greater look at some of the games tested at a deeper level. Now before we do that, here's what the final part list is looking like. Now, assuming that the GPU prices keep falling, you should be able to pick up all parts for around $922. Now this is definitely one of the better priced performance gaming PCs out there right now. With that said, let's have a greater look at some gaming and let's kick it off with Days Gone. We're starting things with 1080p where I'm settling for the highest graphics for the game. And this gives us a frame rate of 91 on average and about 62 FPS at 1% low. Bumping the resolution to 1440p, you can expect similar numbers as before, around 66 FPS on average and 1% low at 48. 
Next up is Call of Duty Warzone, a game that offers great visual details and some ray tracing elements. Having a game turned up to max is no problem for this PC. Starting at 1080p, you can expect as much as 124fps, whereas in 1440p, you'll see around 110fps on average. Keep in mind guys, I am using DLSS. Death Stranding is next up and as you guys can see, we're putting everything at max with DLSS turned on and this gives us almost 120 FPS at 1080p. Now if you have a 1440p monitor, you can expect as much as 97 FPS with this PC. Let's move on to Red Dead Redemption 2. Now this game is by the way also getting that DLSS treatment very soon which I'm very, very excited about. Let me know if you are as well. Anyway, at 1080p, I'm putting most settings at either high to ultra. This gives us 67 FPS and 58 FPS at 1% low. Bumping the resolution to 1440p results in 68 FPS. I am, however, dropping the settings a bit here. But yeah, I still think the game looks great, despite of that. Let's take a look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Once again, yet another demanding game. I'm putting everything at high and this gives us almost 61 FPS at 1080p and 47 FPS at 1440p. Next up we have Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition starting at 1080p at high settings. This is with ray tracing set to medium and DLSS turned up to ultra performance. At 1080p we're seeing healthy numbers, almost 71 FPS on average, whereas in 1440p using the same settings gives us around 61 FPS. Moving on to Control, another game that supports ray tracing and DLSS. Starting at 1080p, you can expect 88 FPS on average. This is with ray tracing set to medium, and the general settings are turned up to high. This is with DLSS turned on. At 1440p, the number is now 52 FPS. A few tweaks here, however, you will see 60 FPS for sure. Again, guys, all PC components can be found down below. I also want to stress that we now have an official Discord server and if you want to become a part of the community, ask questions to any of the awesome people on the channel or to me, please go ahead and join the Discord server today. Link can be found down below. Now watch either of these two videos and I will see you guys in the next video.